Are artificial sweeteners okay to eat? With the growing obesity epidemic and the blame placed on sugar for basically causing the obesity epidemic, artificial sweeteners have become a staple in the American diet. One in four children consume artificial sweetener on a daily basis. And nearly half, or 41% of U.S. adults, consume artificial sweetener on a daily basis. On the face of it, artificial sweeteners seem like a harmless alternative to sugar. They pass through us mostly unabsorbed, and they allow us to eat sweets without consuming calories. What could be better than that? In the past, with my patients who were overweight or had diabetes, I would recommend artificial sweetener instead of sugar. There was clear mortality data showing that sugar increased risk of death and was clearly contributing to weight gain through the excess calories and to diabetes through the sugar entering the bloodstream. Artificial sweeteners seem for a long time to be a great solution. There's a growing body of evidence, however, and it's only in the past decade the oldest study I could find was 12 years ago. There's a growing body of evidence that artificial sweeteners are actually worse for us than sugar. We're talking about research coming out in the past decade that shows an increased risk for weight gain from artificial sweetener, for diabetes, for heart disease, for stroke, and for early death. Indeed, risk of death increases by up to 26% for those who drink artificially sweetened soda. And that's compared to an 8% increased risk of death for those who drink sugar-sweetened beverages. So in this study of over half a million adults, it was actually demonstrated that artificial sweetened beverages were worse for you than sugar-sweetened beverages. Now the question is, how can something with zero calories that basically goes through us unabsorbed be so deadly? And the answer is that artificial sweeteners influence, they change our gut microbiome, the bacteria that live in our intestines. And these gut microbiome, their composition, determines our overall health and our lifespan. The studies proving this link between artificial sweetener and disease are ingenious and published in the best journals around like Cell, Nature, and Science. The researchers fed mice artificial sweetener and then examined the gut microbiome, the bacteria in the intestines of the mice, and noticed that there was a change in the composition of the microbiome of these mice who were fed artificial sweetener, and that these mice developed thrombosis, a predisposition to clotting. They developed increased blood sugar, insulin resistance, and had shorter lifespans. And just to prove the connection rock solid, they then transplanted the microbiome, the bacteria from these mice into mice that did not consume artificial sweetener. And the mice that did not consume artificial sweetener, now with that microbiome of the mice that did, were became as sick and had the same disease as the mice consuming artificial sweetener. This proved that it was the bacteria in the intestines from the artificially sweetened consuming mice that caused the problem. Another question to consider is, are all artificial sweeteners bad? Well, all artificially sweetened beverages are definitely bad. And specifically, when the following artificial sweeteners were studied, they were shown to cause problems. Aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, or Splenda, and erythritol. The only non-nutritive sweetener I could find that actually hasn't been linked to poor human health is stevia, though stevia has been demonstrated to change our gut microbiome. My recommendation is to stay away from stevia as well, although it is probably the safest of the bunch. Another question is, is there such a thing as a safe dose? Well, the studies in sugar-sweetened beverages and artificially sweetened beverages showed a problem when consumption exceeded a cup of the beverage a month. So I would say that basically we don't know if there's a safe dose and you're better off limiting these artificial sweeteners as much as possible. Does this mean cutting out 
foods with artificial sweetener? Yes. Does it mean cutting out drinks with artificial sweetener? Yes. Does it mean cutting out gum and candy and desserts with artificial sweetener? Definitely. Does it mean cutting out every single product in your home with artificial sweetener? Ideally. I noticed my mouthwash and my toothpaste have artificial sweetener. I have yet to switch to an alternative. So basically, the question becomes, do you have to give up on sweets altogether? You definitely can enjoy whole fruit. I recommend one whole fruit each day. A serving of whole fruit is a apple, a pear, banana, orange, kiwi, or a cup of berries. The difference between the whole fruit and an added sugar in foods is that the whole fruit is packed with fiber and that slows down the breakdown of the sugar so it doesn't hit our system all at once. Fruits are also full of water, which fills us up quickly. What else should you avoid to live longer? I wanna share with you a list of the 10 foods to limit. One of them is artificial sweetener. It's part of a free download and you can access it using the link below. As a family physician, I've done extensive research over the past two decades to identify the actions you need to take daily to live longer. I've put together a roadmap that will help you increase your lifespan, improve your overall health, and lead to an energetic and happier life. I'm also offering a free consultation to the first 10 respondents. I want to help you map out a way forward to help you reach your goals. Let's talk. You can schedule this call with me. The link is below. This has been your weekly Health Score Longevity Report. My name is Nicholas Cohen. I'm a board certified family physician with over a decade of clinical experience, and I'm the CEO and founder of Health Score, the lifestyle to promote longevity and better health. Thank you for watching.